everyone, let's get right into it. Reading your nutrition level. Let us look at the nutrition level of a typical peanut butter. I will not be showing you the product, but the one I'm reading from is of Captain Kids Peanut Butter. It says that the serving size is 2 tablespoons. That is for 2 tablespoons of peanut butter, you are getting all of these nutritions. It also says that you get 16 grams of fat per serving. In this case, per serving means 2 tablespoons. We've discussed this before, that 1 gram fat contains 9 calories. This means that you get 16 multiplied by 9, which gives you 144 calories from fat. RDA suggests 30% of nutrition in the form of fats, so in a 2000 calorie diet plan, it comes out to be 600 calories. If you ate 2 tablespoons of peanut butter, then you have already covered 144 calories from fat. This also means that there are 200 calories in 2 tablespoons of peanut butter, of which 144 calories are from fats. Since you have already covered 144 calories from fats, you will now require 456 calories from fats as per recommended dietary allowances to fulfill your day's requirement for fat. Percentage daily value means the percentage of that particular nutrition that you cover up in a day if you are eating a 2000 calorie diet. That means that 16 grams of fat has covered 25% of your daily requirement of fat in a 2000 calorie diet. It is not absolutely necessary to know about percentage daily values, but it can help you briefly understand the contribution of a nutrition at a glance, such as just looking at a nutrition level of peanut butter, you will be able to tell 25% of our daily requirements for fat is already achieved in a 2000 calorie diet plan. If we were on an 1800 calorie diet plan, then the same 144 calories from fat will round up to 540 calories, which becomes 27%. If we keep on going in a 1700 calorie diet plan, that will be 36% of your entire day's requirement. Let us look at another nutrition level. So this is what a nutrition level of appy and apple juice drink looks like. We're not going to look at each and every nutrition, but let's just look at added sugar. It says that all this nutrition value is per 100 milliliters, but since our drink is 200 milliliter, everything needs to be multiplied by 2, right? It says that the added sugar is 14.3 grams, which is 28.6 grams sugar in total. That gives us 114.4 calories only from added sugar. Well, that's 6.8, which rounds off to 7 teaspoons of sugar in one of these drinks. According to American Heart Association, the maximum amount of sugar you should eat in a day are 9 teaspoons for men and 6 teaspoons for women. Well, one happy drink has all of that and maybe even slightly more for a woman. Let's just stick with the most basic composition that is 45, 25 and 30 percentage of carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Let us first construct a diet plan that will circle around 1400 calories. We can have 45 percent of carbs which becomes 630 calories from carbohydrates. 157.5 grams similarly 25 percent of protein which is 350 calories from proteins 37 87.5 grams you can also say you require one gram per kg of your body weight which will be 70 grams for a 70 kg person muscle building can require up to 40 percent of diet to come from protein but we will talk about that briefly at the end of this video and lastly 30 percent from fats which is 420 calories from fats which is equivalent to 46.67 grams of fats Another important thing that we want to keep in mind is we want to do this without emptying our pockets. Let us try to construct a diet plan keeping all of this in mind. Women should not go below 1300 and men should never go below 1500 calories in a day because you could easily miss out on nutrition which may even lead to bigger health issues. Even so, 1300 for women and 1500 for men is still a best deficient mark for people who perform little to no exercise that is sedentary routine. Without considering speed or pace whatsoever, an ordinary person will require or burn around 200 calories walking an hour. This means that women and men who walk for an hour can eat 1500 and 1700 calories respectively and still lose good amount of weight. You can even eat more if you exercise more often. So we will just stay in the middle and construct a diet plan that will circle around 1400 calories. And you can add or subtract few calories based upon your requirements and choice. It's time to select carbohydrates, proteins and fats accordingly to stay within 1400 calories. And above that you will be able to construct and manipulate the diet plan by yourself. Also remember this is scale for future calculations. One tablespoon is roughly equal to 15 grams. This way you can look up nutrition level for any food yourself in Google and get a general idea about the 
quantity of that substance. Basmati rice is long grain rice, which I'm guessing to be eaten by most of the people in our country. The maximum I can give you with white rice is 150 grams. How much is 150 grams? It's one cup. What does a cup look like? Okay, let's break this down. One tablespoon is about 15 grams, so that will be equal to 10 tablespoon. That's it. 10 tablespoon of rice with circles around 200 calories. White rice, 150 grams, 206 calories, nearly equal to 10 tablespoons. Lentils, here I am talking about moong dal or beans, but feel free to browse your option. 100 gram, 105 calories. Broccoli, 91 grams, which will be equal to 31 calories. Broccoli is also known as calorie-free food as you get so much nutrition for so little calories. Other options could be spinach, carrots, kai, potatoes with the skin, but please feel free to browse your option and also refer to my previous video for other options. 100 grams. An ordinary chicken will contain 239 calories of which 14 gram is fat. 200 calories in total. I'm assuming here that you manage to get chicken breast or chicken wings or boil your chicken and remove the excess oil or fat and somehow manage to get that 14 grams of fat to somewhere around 8 grams. If you manage to get chicken breast, you can lower that up to 3.6 grams of fat and also increase your protein amount to 31 grams. But here I'll just assume you manage to get it somewhere in between. That way you could reduce 239 calories to 200 calories or even less. Refer to previous video for other protein sources. Best source is chicken breast. Replacements are fish, salmon, tuna. This means that you want to switch foods every now and then to get other nutrition as well. For example, in this case, having fish will give you omega-3 fatty acids. Eggs, three whites, one full, 51 calories and 78 calories. In total, that will be 129 calories. Base source, no replacements. Eggs is the most dependable, reliable and cheap food for muscle building. Milk, one cup, that will be equivalent to 103 calories. Base source as in versatility will be soy milk for people who are lactose intolerant as well as soy milk has much better protein to fat ratio. Banana, smaller than 6 inch, 72 calories. Banana happens to be a great source of potassium which prevents muscle cramping. One ounce of almond contains 23 almonds, so for 10 almonds it will be roughly 82 calories. It also promotes digestion, reduces hunger, keeps cholesterol and blood sugar levels in check. One tablespoon of honey is nearly equivalent to 21 grams, which is 64 calories. If you need it for oats as well as milk, go half and half. Oats, 35 grams, 142 calories, nearly equal to 6 tablespoons. Raisins, 10 pieces, 5.2 grams, which is equal to 8.11 calories. Very few carbs from natural sugars, as they are supposed to be just grapes, naturally dried in the sun. Plain yogurt, 100 grams, 80 calories, 6 and a half tablespoon. Try to get the low fat versions of dairy products. So what are we cooking chicken and broccoli in? Best option is to boil them, but you can either use pure olive oil, half tablespoon each, or use extra virgin olive oil just for dressing after boiling them. Olive oil, one tablespoon, 119 calories, 14 grams fats in olive oil, of which 11.4 gram is good fat. This will be around 1400 calories with tomatoes, garlic, ginger, and other seasonings. It's okay for this nutrition to not exactly be 45, 25, and 30%. If I was way off on some nutritional value or calories, be sure to mention them in the comment section below so that other people can look it up and improve upon it. You can manipulate these nutrition and add some of your own while keeping in mind what we discussed in the previous video. When having a cheat meal, you must understand that you can do so while still staying under your deficit mark. For example, you can have ice cream and cut up something that has high sugar in your diet plan, such as raisins or maybe dairy products. You may also want to eat only half tablespoon of peanut butter or half the consumption of oats or white rice. Also keep in mind that white rice is significantly low because we are on a 1400 calorie diet plan. Goal every day is to try to eat clean or prepare fancy foods at home. You need to know if you are going out and what foods you want to cut off on that particular day so that you will still stay under that calorie deficit mark. 
If you are lactose intolerant, just replace milk with soy milk and discard yogurt. You can try to get soy milk and if it's not possible, just add enough nuts like almonds, cashew, etc. in your diet plan. Even if you are not lactose intolerant, I'll still suggest you to have dairy products in alternative day just to stay on the safe side. But I guess everything becomes poisonous when you take too much in quantity. Soya beans, black soya beans, Nutrilla, Potmas and Mashura. You can add these. They are much concentrated source of protein but also has some negative effects in your health if taken regularly. Fruits, veggies, oats, peanut butter, malta grain bread and you can go back to my previous video for other healthy foods that you can add and increase your calories as well as meet other requirements. They are also money friendly and also easily available in our country. I just want you to modify these with other healthy foods and add few more calories. I only eat chanego dal, meaning seasoned lentils that involves lentils, less than half tablespoon of olive oil and garlic. I eat oats with raisins and less than half a tablespoon of honey. I eat milk with less than half a tablespoon of honey. I eat multigrain bread with crunchy peanut butter. You can add ginger, garlic, tomatoes and they will all carry some calories but don't worry about them. You can mix oats, bananas milk to create pancakes just consider the total of all the extra ingredients to be around 50 to 100 calories you can see the trend here right you can modify small calories without worrying about anything and create something that you can eat for years to come and still be happy with your diet plan the problem with trying to build muscles with natural food while staying on budget is that it is really hard to find isolated sources of protein. We covered most of the healthy foods on budget and even on doing so we could barely meet 25% of daily dietary allowances on a 1300 or 1400 calories. The problem with trying to increase your protein also increases other nutrition such as carbohydrates and fats. Also know that people go up to 40% protein and reduce fat to only 20%. This becomes extremely hard. That's why people depend upon supplements that have more concentrated sources of protein. If your goal is muscle building, then you can change that protein from 25% to 40% and drop fat to 20%. Finding a lean source of proteins is really hard. That's why you need to increase your chicken breast to 200 grams or so and add more egg whites to around 10 or even more. That way you won't have to depend upon supplements so often. That will readily create a diet plan good enough for muscle building. I'll really suggest you to add more protein regardless of your gender or your goals because I have said this before, muscle burns more calories than fat. Calorie counting doesn't require you to count every single detail you can. Just have a general idea about the deficient mark and work around it. A bit more carbs here and sugar there won't create any problems as long as you can choose healthier food and stay under that deficient mark. When you want to eat cheat meals, make room for them and maybe drop something unnecessary in your diet plan. Try to cook cheat meals at home as often as you can and you don't even have to call them cheat meals. In the next video we will see what is the best time to consume your calories. I know this may not seem much but it will significantly help you change your lifestyle and could also help you on the long run. If you feel like this video can help some of your friends, feel free to share it with them. That's it for this video. Lace up. Peace out.